Hello everyone, and welcome to your complete and ultimate Ganyu guide. Ganyu has made her return in the second half of the 3.0 update alongside Kokomi. So this video is to hopefully aim to guide all future Ganyu owners on how to roughly build her. This video will cover all of the following in order. General playstyle, talent overview, weapon options, artifact sets and stats, team comps, constellation overview, other miscellaneous info, as well as a spiral abyss showcase, all in an as condensed manner as possible for you to quickly view back on. For a more brief overview of Ganyu's kit, please watch the Liyue 5 star character overview we made a few months ago. Lastly as a disclaimer, nearly all the footage in this video will be of my personal Ganyu at Constellation Zero, but there will be a C6 Ganyu clip that's used for demonstration purposes. Thanks to Irfan for letting me use his account to record footage with. With all that out of the way, let's get right into the guide. Ganyu is an extremely powerful character who can be played in a multitude of ways. Being a cryo DPS, she has access to both freeze and melt comps, while her elemental burst's long uptime and off-field cryo application also makes her a very good burst support. When played as a DPS, Ganyu heavily relies on her charge shots for the bulk of her damage. Her charge shots have ridiculously high scalings and deal AoE damage, thus making them extremely strong. However, her heavy reliance on charge shot gameplay might not appeal to a lot of players, so I highly recommend trying Ganyu out in her trial first to see if the playstyle is to your liking. For the purposes of this guide, I will only be discussing three primary playstyles for Ganyu. Melt, Freeze, and Support. Let's briefly go over each one of them. Melt Ganyu focuses on reverse melting all of Ganyu's charge shots by having an off-field pyro applicator constantly apply pyro on the enemy. This has the highest damage ceiling for Ganyu, but is also the hardest to play. Melt Ganyu has limited team members, and depending on the team comp, often has tight and restrictive rotations for optimal damage. This playstyle also tends to take some of the best supports in the game, such as Bennett, Xiang Ling, Zhong Li, or Kazaha, which often limits your other Abyss team's team comps. Freeze Ganyu is as straightforward as it gets. This playstyle heavily relies on all of Ganyu's kit, along with pairing her with an off-field AoE Hydro applicator like Mona or Kokomi. This has lower damage potential than Melt Ganyu, but is easier to play and is incredibly effective against large waves of trash mobs due to Ganyu's strong burst and AoE charge shots. However, this playstyle greatly falls off against boss-type enemies since they cannot be frozen, which negates a lot of the purpose of playing a freeze comp. Finally, for support Ganyu, this playstyle relies primarily on her elemental burst. This isn't a common use for Ganyu, as there are often better supports that can fill in the role better than her, but it is an option for those who want to play Ganyu, but hate relying on her charge shot gameplay. Starting with her normal attack talent, Ganyu's normal attack is the cornerstone of her gameplay, so let's go over it in detail. Her normal attack string has low multipliers and aren't super special, so I'd avoid using them. However, the real star of the show is her charge shot. There are two stages of her charge shot. Level 1 deals cryo damage and a single target, but when held to level 2, which is indicated by the second circle closing in on Ganyu's bow, it will fire the same frost flake arrow, but also fires off a bloom which fires even more arrows that deal AoE cryo damage. This bloom will occur once the initial arrow comes in contact with anything, meaning you can deal damage even by just firing towards the floor, which makes aiming with Ganyu significantly easier, especially against certain enemies that move around a lot. As you can see, both the Frost Flake Arrow and Bloom have extremely high multipliers, a total of 662% at talent level 10, thus making up the bulk of Ganyu's damage when played as a DPS. Neither the Frost Flake nor Bloom Arrows have ICD, meaning they always apply Cryo on the enemy on contact, thus allowing you to melt both the Frost Flake and Bloom Arrows. For DPS Ganyu players, this talent should be your highest priority to level. This also has an extremely strong passive talent attached to it. Ganyu's A1 increases her next charge attack's crit rate by 20% after firing one charge attack first, meaning that when building crit on your Ganyu, you generally should try to target around 50-60% to crit rate, assuming you aren't using the Blizzard Strayer artifact set. Ganyu's elemental skill is quite simple. Ganyu will summon a Lotus and take a back step while dealing cryo damage. This Lotus will act as a taunt which distracts nearby enemies and also has a small amount of HP. After 6 seconds, or if it's destroyed, 
the Lotus will explode and deal cryo damage. Without Constellation 6 though, this skill isn't really anything too special. Ganyu's Elemental Burst summons a Cryo Disco Ball that drops Cryo Shards within a fairly large AoE. This will drop a total of 50 Ice Shards, and the distribution of the Shards is fairly complicated, so I recommend pausing to read this text taken from Kaching Mains to understand it. But the gist of it is, an enemy will automatically be targeted by an Ice Shard every 5 Shards, while the remainder will be randomly distributed. It's not really super important to understand, but it does have quadratic scaling when hitting against grouped up mobs making this deal far more damage when used in conjunction with something like Venti's Tornado. Also, this burst has standard ICD, meaning that it applies cryo on an enemy every 3 instances of damage it deals. Moving on to weapon options, Ganyu's weapon options heavily differ depending on the team comp and playstyle. I will go over each weapon first in order of star rarity, then list a weapon ranking at the end for each primary playstyle to make it easier to refer to. Kicking off the 5 star list, we have the Amos Bow. The Amos Bow has been Ganyu's best in slot option ever since her release, and continues to be her best option. While its passive seems very conditional, it is actually perfectly tailored for her, as Ganyu's blooms take 0.3 seconds to fire off, even if you fire at point blank range. This means that more often than not, you will easily receive all stacks of the Amos Bow with Ganyu. This gives the highest damage on her blooms, but do note that due to this being an attack percent weapon, you will need decent artifact quality to balance out your crit stats. Also, Keep in mind that this is a standard banner weapon, so I generally do not recommend pulling for this weapon while it's on the limited banner, especially on this current one where it is paired with the Everlasting Moon Glow. Aqua Simulacra. This weapon is Ganyu's next best option. It offers an outrageous amount of crit damage and gives bonus damage when enemies are close by. Depending on the team comp, playstyle, and build, this can also outperform Amos Bow in certain situations. However, it does have low base attack, which can be supplemented by attack buffers like Bennett. And I also do not recommend using this weapon on Ganyu if you have Yelan, as this weapon will make a bigger impact on her instead. Elegy for the end. This is Ganyu's best support option. While it doesn't deal as much damage, it offers a large amount of energy recharge, along with a team-wide attack and elemental mastery buff that's very easy to obtain. All other 5-star weapons will all work just fine on Ganyu. Polar Star has crit rate as a substat, which makes building easier, as well as giving her the highest damage on her burst and skill. However, it has a very conditional passive that requires very awkward stack building, so I do not recommend the Polar Star if you aren't playing a freeze Ganyu. Thundering Pulse is a very strong option due to its high base attack and crit damage, but it also has a very inconsequential passive. Hunter's Path offers an absurd amount of crit rate, but its passive limits you to only playing Melt Ganyu. With this weapon in particular, I highly recommend running an Elemental Mastery Sands and having Bennett in the party to fully take advantage of it. And finally, Skyward Harp offers both crit rate and crit damage along with having a high base attack, making this a very strong universal option. For 4 star weapons, we have the Prototype Crescent. At Refinement 5, this weapon actually performs very similarly or can even outperform some of the 5 star weapons, assuming you trigger its passive. Triggering its passive is also very simple, as you do not need to do a full charge shot to even proc it, as quickly firing off an arrow in aimed mode at a weak spot will still give you the attack and movement speed buff. However, it is very important to note that there are many enemies in this game that do not have weak spots, like Child. This makes this weapon fairly conditional, though it is still a very strong option regardless. This weapon is craftable, even in early game, making this a fantastic free-to-play option. Hamayumi Hamayumi is generally Ganyu's best 4-star option for Melt playstyle. Melt Ganyu will often not have to use her burst, which makes maintaining this bow's buff fairly easy. This also circumvents Prototype Crescent's conditional passive by being more consistent on all types of enemies. This weapon is also craftable, though it is locked behind a time-gated quest in Inazuma, which might make this unsuitable for early game players. Ganyu's best 4-star support option is the Favonius. This helps both her and her team by providing energy particles, while giving her a ton of energy recharge to maintain her burst uptime. Overall, a low damaging but very good team utility weapon. Other 4-star options will work fine, though I generally do not recommend them over either the Crescent or Hamayumi. Blackcliff Warbow performs quite well, but its passive is not consistent. King Squire is an okay option for Melt, but it still underperforms compared to the other two. 
Moon's Moon and Fading Twilight are both decent support options, but I also wouldn't recommend them over Favonius. Finally, onto 3 star options. For my fellow low AR players, we have the Sharpshooter's Oath and Messenger. These two are both good options for those building up, though I'd quickly move away from them once you are able to craft the prototype crescent. So in general, these are my weapon rankings for Ganyu. For Melt Ganyu, I recommend Amos Bow and Aqua Simulacra as the top options, with Hunter's Path being a viable option as well if you run an Elemental Mastery Sands or have a Constellation to Kazaha in the party. Following that, I recommend any of the DPS bow options from 5 to 4 star, as they all perform quite similarly depending on the situation and build. For a Freeze Ganyu, Aqua Simulacra, Polar Star, and Skyward Harp all take the top spots. Amos is still a very high contender if you have it. After that, Prototype Crescent is still a very good option, along with Fading Twilight being a decent choice as well. I do not recommend Hamayumi for this build, as it is restrictive on your burst uptime. Finally, for support Ganyu, Elegy for the End is easily the best option, with Favonius Warbo being a great team utility option for a 4 star. Arco Simulacra, Polar Star, Skyward Harp, and Moon's Moon are all still great for maximizing burst damage as well. Let's move on to artifacts. First, let's segregate this into the various playstyles. For Melt Ganyu, you should run either an Attack or Elemental Mastery Sands, Cryo Damage on the Goblet, and Crit on the Circlet. For Freeze Ganyu using Blizzard Strayer, Attack Percent or Energy Recharge on the Sands, Cryo Damage on the Goblet, and either Crit Damage or Attack Percent on the Circlet. Finally, for Support Ganyu, Energy Recharge on the Sands, Cryo Damage on the Goblet, and crit on the circlet is ideal. Substat priority is as follows. Crit rate or damage for building a good ratio, elemental mastery for bonus melt damage, and attack percent for general damage. If you heavily rely on her burst for freeze or support, energy recharge also becomes a priority. It is also important to keep in mind the significance of crit rate for Ganyu. Since she has to take her time to do charge shots, missing and not critting result in very large DPS losses. This means that even though Ganyu's A1 gives you 20% free crit rate, you should always target 50% crit rate at minimum for consistency, as this will be the crit rate you will rely on the very first charge shot used to activate her A1. This is of course assuming you aren't running Blizzard Strayer, in which case 30-40% to should be the minimum to hit. For my Wanderer's Troop gamers, please don't just stack crit damage upon crit damage and end up with around 30-40% to crit rate. While that is nice for nukes, your actual DPS will be extremely low, making it a very subpar way to build Ganyu. Moving on to artifact set recommendations, Ganyu has very different artifact sets to cover a very wide variety of playstyles, so I'll go over each one. Starting with the DPS options, we have 4-piece Wanderer's Troop. This is the overall best set for Ganyu's charge shot damage. Its 2-piece bonus also gives elemental mastery, thus making this the best option for melt gameplay. However, this is a very very difficult set to farm, as it only drops from bosses or the strong box. I generally recommend a high quality set of Wanderers for both Melt and Freeze, as it is very resin inefficient to farm for both this and Blizzard Strayer, just for both playstyles. And depending on the comp, Ganyu might still heavily rely on her charge shots, even in Freeze. Overall, this is the best set I recommend for anyone building Ganyu. For Freeze Ganyu, the general best option would be Blizzard Strayer. This set gives you 20% crit rate if the enemies are affected by Cryo, and an additional 20% if they are frozen. If you have 2 cryo members in the party, you will gain another 15%, meaning that at 45% crit rate, you will have 100% effective crit rate for your burst, and will be overcapped for your charge shots due to her A1. With so much free crit rate, this allows you to focus on getting other stats like attack percent, energy recharge, and crit damage. Blizzard Strayer builds should try to hit around 30-40% crit rate, and also should have no issues going over 200 crit damage. Energy recharge would also be dependent on your substats and weapon choice, though you should ideally hit around 150% minimum. Against Wanderer's Troop, the charge attack damage will be lower by a significant margin, but your general burst and skill damage should be higher. Moving on to support options, we have the Emblem of Severed Fate artifact set. This maximizes Ganyu's burst damage, and also gives her some energy recharge for better burst uptime. Overall, a very strong set and is also very resin efficient to farm due to the sheer number of characters that would use this 4-piece bonus. 4-piece Noblesse Oblige. 
This is a good option if you do not already have another Noblesse user in the party, as it increases both Ganyu's burst damage, while giving her team a significant attack buff. This will do less damage than Emblem of Seven Fate, but offers better team utility. That covers the main sets, but there are several two-piece two-piece combinations that work just fine as a temporary option if you cannot get a good four-piece set. For the DPS builds, you can go two-piece Blizzard Straya with any of the attack percent sets. You can also use Noblesse Oblige for burst damage instead. If you happen to be playing Melt Ganyu but do not have a decent four-piece Wanderer set, then using a two-piece Wanderers with two-piece Blizzard Straya or attack percent can also work just fine. Finally, just to throw it out there, 4-piece Shiminawas has a very high damage ceiling, not far off from Wanderer's Troop. However, it has anti-synergy with the Hamayumi, and also has very restrictive playstyles and rotations that can make it very hard to fully take advantage of. That being said, it is a resin-efficient artifact to farm due to it being paired with Emblem, so it is still a viable pick. Moving on to team comps, Ganyu has various teams depending on the playstyle. For Melt teams, you will obviously require a Pyro character, oftentimes Xiangling or Bennett. Bennett can act as the healer, attack buffer, and Pyro battery to Xiangling all in one, while Xiangling's Pyronado gives off-field Pyro application for you to melt all your charged shots. This is especially strong as Xiangling's Pyronado has no ICD, which works in conjunction with Ganyu's charge shots that also have no ICD. For the last slot, this can be filled in by either an animal character, such as Kazuha, or a shielder like Zhongli. Zhongli in particular is a great party member to Ganyu, as he will prevent her from getting interrupted while doing her charge shots, which would otherwise lead to very massive DPS losses. Keep in mind that while the damage ceiling is very high for such a team comp, Bennett, Xiangling, Kazo, and Zhongli are considered very valuable supports in many other team comps as well, and thus will limit your other Abyss team slots a lot. Free teams are a lot more straightforward, as they require one more cryo party member for resonance, such as Shen He or Diona, one off-field Hydra Applicator for Freeze, such as Kokomi or Mona, and then a flex slot that can be filled in by either Zhongli or an animal character such as Kazaha. This team comp is very strong against non-boss type enemies and smaller mobs. However, as you can tell just from looking at this, Freeze often has many 5-star characters, making this a fairly expensive team to build to be optimal. Finally, for support Ganyu, she can be in some decent melt teams with pyro DPSs such as Hu Tao or Diluc, or Hydro DPSs such as Ayato. However, these characters generally have better tailored supports for them, so I only recommend playing Ganyu with them if you really like Ganyu but do not like her chart shot gameplay. As a bonus, I do think that Ganyu is a fantastic sub DPS when paired with Ayaka, as she can serve as both a battery as well as fill in on Ayaka's burst downtime. Ganyu is an incredibly strong character at C0, and IMO her constellations don't really add much value as much as other characters, so I don't really recommend pulling for them unless you are a whale. That being said, let's go over them. Constellation 1. This reduces enemies' cryo resistance after a bloom hits them. This makes it good for increasing her DPS slightly, and is the only constellation worth pulling for up till C6. For those who want to pull constellations but not up till C6, this is the stopping point. Constellation 2. This gives Ganyu one more charge of her skill. It gives her slightly better energy generation, but the real value of this constellation only comes out as C6. So overall, this isn't a very good constellation. Constellation 3 increases her burst talent levels, while Constellation 5 increases her skills talent levels. Constellation 4. This increases your DPS output after using your elemental burst. This is not very important for Melt Ganyu, as she doesn't really use her burst in that playstyle, but it's quite nice for those playing Freeze. Again, not a very high value constellation. Constellation 6, easily Ganyu's best constellation. This changes her playstyle from a consistent charge shot one to a quick scope style one instead. This allows Ganyu to immediately fire off a level two charge shot after dropping her elemental skill without the need to actually charge it, thus synergizing with her constellation two as well. This means that in a full rotation, you can often get three level two charge shots down in under five seconds by dropping one skill down, swapping to supports for their rotation, then swapping back to Ganyu to fire the remaining shots. This makes Ganyu a very effective nuker, and also largely negates the need for a shield, due to the sheer speed you can get damage off within such a short period of time. On to some miscellaneous info. For Melt Ganyu players, 
Using your burst is generally discouraged as it can steal the pyro auras, thus making your charge shots unable to melt. For freeze players, Sing Cho and Ye Lan are not good supports for Gan Yu. This is because you need to weave in normal attacks in between your charge shots, which is very suboptimal. This is also compounded by the fact that Sing Cho and Ye Lan are better against single targets rather than AoE scenarios, thus just making Mona and Kokomi much better options instead. While Ganyu takes a backstep in her skill, contrary to the way the animation looks, she does not have any invincibility frames while doing it. This means that she can still be hit out of it. And finally, we have the Abyss Showcase. This current Abyss is very 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 bad for Freeze, so I decided to play Melt Ganyu on the bottom half of Abyss 12 instead. She will be supported by Kazaha, Bennett, and Xiang Ling. She'll also be carrying a level 90 Skyward Harp, because at the time of recording, I had not yet pulled an Amos Bow. Though this should serve better to roughly demonstrate free-to-play levels of Ganyu damage. Do keep in mind though, that my supports are fairly decked up.
Thank you everyone for watching this Ganyu guide. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. I also stream every once in a while on Twitch, so be sure to follow me there as well. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.